What's up guys, my name is Javier and welcome back to Tool Craze. We got some more Ryobi power tools to take a look at, starting off with their new cordless 6.5 inch 18 volt circular saw. Over the years we've seen Ryobi go through several updates, starting off with their blue tools. And then all of a sudden their new highlighted green color started to pop up. There were a couple of green cordless circular saw models and now this year 2015 we have an all new 6.5 inch model. And just like many of last year's new cordless power tools, they're adding more muscle into their newer cordless power tools. I never got to try out the newer Ryobi 5.5 inch cordless circular saw that came out last year, but this new model is set to have 40% more power, and it even uses a larger 6.5 inch blade. Obviously this is going to bring up the cut capacity up to 2 and 16th inches, so you can cut larger thicker materials in one pass, instead of having to do them separately. Now before I go on any further, I want to let you guys know that the price is the same as the previous model at $69. And that's as a bare tool only, so no battery or charger. So keep that in mind as I go over its features and its performance. So while they made it a bit larger with a larger blade, overall it's very similar to the previous model in terms of looks. Ryobi went with a stamp shoe and with plastic upper and lower blade guards. Although plastic isn't as durable as metal such as aluminum or magnesium, the ABS plastic that they use on their power tools these days is pretty rugged. The plastic blade guards also keep the weight down as it's pretty light at only 5 pounds, but that's without the battery. It's about 6 pounds with a compact lithium ion battery and about 7 pounds with a full size 4.0 lithium battery. Ryobi also did away with the built in laser found on the previous model. Casual users might miss this feature, but experienced users don't rely on lasers when making cuts. Going back to the shoe, it does have the usual features like the bevel cut feature to make bevel cuts up to 56 degrees. And it can also accept the rift fence at the front of the shoe for making straight cuts. Although the rift fence isn't included with the saw, so you're going to have to go out and purchase one if you want this feature. What I did find that was interesting with the saw was that instead of the usual inch markings on the back side of the blade guard, Ryobi went with a viewing window on the side of the guard with markings for measurements. I thought this was very simple and easy to use, especially for someone new to power tools. It gives you readings with markings at every quarter inch, although it only gives you a number reading on half inch increments while the quarter inch increments aren't numbered and only give you a line for a marking. And another thing to note is that the blade is positioned on the left side of the saw instead of the right side. So if you're used to the blade being on the right side of the saw you might need to adjust. But honestly most cordless saws have the blade mounted on the left so whether you go with this Ryobi or another brand's cordless saw you're most likely going to find the blade mounted on the left side. And on the positive side with the blade being mounted on the left makes it very easy to use for right handers such as myself. And I actually prefer the blade mounted on the left side as I can easily see the line of sight when I'm cutting. As for performance, it certainly performs very well for a coil circular saw. It powers through 2x4s at a good pace. I decided to add another shelf to my little storage room and had to make a few cuts in 2x4s to hold the shelf in place. The power delivery was good and handled the 2x4s very well. Making simple cuts such as these didn't bog down the motor and cut the lumber rather smoothly. The next step was cutting a sheet of OSB down to length to go on top of the 2x4s. The long cuts were made into 7 16 inch thick OSB and it was very easy for the saw. Although I was going at a good pace, I actually could have gone a bit faster if I wanted to, although the line wouldn't have been as straight. So I cut the OSB into two sections and cut the last one down to size so they can both fit into the cramped spot. Many cordless power tools nowadays have electric brakes. I've tested Ryobi's latest hammer drill and impact wrench and they both have that feature. But over here on this saw it doesn't have an electric brake to bring the saw to a halt. What it does is it takes a few seconds to stop the motor. It's not extremely slow as I've seen other saws where you have to wait a good while for the blade to stop before you can make your next cut. But that's not really an issue on this saw, even without the electric brake as I can make repetitive cuts quickly without having to wait for the blade to come to a complete stop. So for everyday tasks, this saw has the power to take on regular 2x lumber and sheet goods. I also wanted to say I would handle tougher jobs, such as cutting much larger lumber such as this 4x6. With a larger piece of lumber such as this one, you have to cut it on both sides and I handled this 4x6 pretty well for a cordless saw. The next test I put it through was much harder with a pressure treated 2x12. Here we can see the dense lumber push the saw to its limit and it even caused it to bog down. It bogged down because I pushed pretty hard, but if you take your time, it can power through the entire cut, although not as fast. 
So the power delivery is very similar to more expensive brush saws using 6.5 inch blades. So you get lots of power for your money. It's not as powerful as brushless cordless circular saws or even saws that use larger 7.25 inch blades. But for a brush cordless 6.5 inch saw, it does very well. And its overall build quality is very good. Although you don't get premium materials such as a magnesium or aluminum shoe or blade guards. Alright guys, thanks for stopping by. Let me know what you guys think of this new Ryobi Coilless Circular Saw in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And follow me on social media and over at the web at toolcraze.net for more tool reviews and tool news. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.